Welcome back. Last time we looked at parametrization and how we can use that technique to quickly optimize our circuit with parametric sweeps. This time we're going to discuss one more tool that's at our disposal, the calculator. Let's continue where we left off last time. Make sure that the width of the PMOS transistor is set to the value that we found in the previous video, so 140 nanometers, and that the DC input voltage of the inverter is set to 600 millivolts. When we take these parameters and draw the DC input to output transfer, we get a plot that looks like this. Notice that the DC transfer is very steep around the input voltage of 600 millivolts. That means that if we were to apply an input voltage that is biased at 600 millivolts with an additional small signal on top, we will amplify that input signal to the output. In other words, we can use this digital circuit, the inverter, as an amplifier. However, we don't know what the gain of that amplifier would be right now. So how would we do that? Well, a good first step for finding that out is by running the AC simulation that we set up before. So let's do that. Now remember that this is the output voltage of the inverter, but we apply an input voltage with a magnitude of one volt. In other words, the numeric value of the output voltage is equivalent to the linear gain from input to output, because eight over one is still one. We can see the maximum gain that is obtained at low frequencies, and it's around 7.9 times the input voltage. This approach of finding the gain works, but it comes with two small drawbacks. The first one is that we usually work on the dB scale, the decibel scale. This value for the gain of 7.9 lies on the linear scale, which is less commonly used in circuit design. Furthermore, to find out the gain of the circuit, we will have to run the AC simulation manually and then look at this curve by ourselves and find the value using the cursor like this. We don't have an automated way of finding the gain in decibels automatically when we run the simulation. And that is exactly what we are going to use the calculator for. The calculator will allow us to run the AC simulation and then using an expression, the ADEL will automatically calculate what the gain is as a numerical value. We are going to do that by setting up a new output in this window over here. So go to the setup outputs window Let's give our new output a nice name. Let's call it gain. Now we want to fill in an expression over here that will calculate that gain for us, but we don't know what to fill in here exactly yet. So let's try to figure that out. And we're going to do that with the calculator that's listed over here. To open the calculator, click on this button. Now this interface might shock you, and that is absolutely normal. It looks very convoluted, but let me assure you that we can work our way through it. First, notice these bubbles on top. These bubbles will allow us to obtain numerical values from our simulation results. So for example, these six bubbles are the ones that we use the most. VT and IT allow us to find transient voltages and currents. VF and IF do the same thing, but for the AC simulations. And VDC and IDC, again, the same thing, but then for DC simulations. Now, in our particular case, we just ran an AC simulation. So let's try to obtain the output voltage as a function of frequency. Click on this VF bubble, which will automatically hide the calculator, and then click on a node that we want to measure. Let's do the output node. Notice that we now have an expression here in the calculator, VF out. When we click on this button, we will evaluate everything that is in this green text box. So in this case, when we click on this button, we will get the output voltage as a function of the frequency. And indeed, we get the curve that we obtained before. Just to make our gain expression nicely universal, let's divide the output voltage by the input voltage. And because we called the input voltage in with all capital letters, we can now expand the expression to this, where we divide the output voltage by the input voltage. However, because the input voltage has an amplitude of one, we won't notice it in the curve over here. So now we want to calculate the voltage gain on the decibel scale. Because this is a voltage gain, we will have to take 20 times the base 10 logarithm of this expression. We can do that using the functions that are listed over here at the bottom of the window. As you might notice, there is an incredible number of functions at our disposal. These include simple mathematical expressions like the cosine, 
to functions that measure transient behavior like rise and fall times, and even functions that can calculate quantities like noise figures. There are simply too many useful expressions here to include in this single video. So I'd like to refer you to where you can find more information on each and every single one of these functions. In the top bar, go to Help, Viva Excel User Guide. In the Find bar, type Appendix B, and then click on this link to the page listing all the calculator functions. On this page, you can find descriptions for every single function that's listed at the calculator window, combined with some useful examples. So for example, the full time function here is quickly described by what it does. It tells us how everything in the function is defined and it'll even give us, and it even gives us a worked out example for how you can use this function on a real waveform. Going back to what we did before, we were looking for a way to transform this linear gain expression to a gain in decibels. We also know that we have to take 20 times the base 10 log of this expression to get it in decibels. We can do that with the db20 function. So let's click on it. And it'll automatically wrap our expression in the function. If we now evaluate what is here, we can now see the gain on the decibel scale. For low frequencies, we obtain a gain of around 18 dBs. And at a frequency of around 100 kilohertz, the gain starts dropping off. We can take it one small step further though. In this plot, we can observe that the gain has a maximum value for low frequencies on this plateau. Is there maybe a way how we can find this maximum gain without having to plot this entire function? Well, there is some good news. There is a way of doing this. For that, we can use the Ymax function that's listed over here. This function takes in a curve and then outputs the largest value on the vertical axis. Because we request a single value, that's also what we're going to get when we click on this button. So now we don't get a plot, but we get a numerical value, 18 dBs. To get back our previous expression, just double click on the highest elements of the stack over here. We now have a very nice expression for finding the largest gain on the decibel scale from input to output. It is now time to take this expression and bring it back to the outputs of ADEL. So open up this window, and what we could technically speaking do is copy this expression to this box over here. There is a nice lazy way of doing this though, and that is the get expression button. And that automatically copies whatever is in the text box over here into this expression box. Press on okay, close the calculator, and now we can rerun the simulation. Now notice that we automatically get this value listed over here. So we don't have to look at this plot anymore. In fact, we can now just completely disable the plot for the output, click on the Run Simulation button, and ADEL will still compute the value correctly without having to draw any plots on the screen. That is just a single value though. What if we wanted to see the influence of, let's say, our DC input voltage, V in, on this maximum gain? For that, you can use a parametric sweep like we did in the previous video. Let's try that out. Go to Tools, Parametric Analysis, then the variable that we want to sweep is going to be V in. Let's sweep it from ground to the supply voltage of 1.2 volts and do that in 51 steps on a linear scale. Now we can click on the green button to run the simulation. This is Cadence warning us that the simulation will take a little while because it will have to rerun the AC simulation 51 times. But because it's a very small circuit, it won't take too long. So just press on OK. We now obtain a plot that shows us the largest obtained voltage gain for this particular inverter circuit as a function of the DC input voltage. We can observe that the largest gain is obtained for an input voltage of 600 millivolts. Again, the 18 dB that we found before. This is just one example of how you can use the calculator combined with parametric sweeps. But you can use this technique to find out how a circuit's performance depends on practically any of its design parameters. You could, for instance, use this to find out how a rise time depends on the transistor width, or how a circuit's bandwidth depends on the size of a capacitor. As you can see, this technique is very powerful and should prove useful in many of your future projects. In the next video, we'll discuss how to investigate the linearity of our inverter by using frequency domain analysis with the FFT. See you then.